It's a great pleasure to be here tonight at this wonderful occasion. Drinks. And also women say something, the dinner and the discussions. Hooray for you. It's fantastic. Thank you. Um, thanks very much. Thank you. Shh, thank you. Uh, it is right of, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm used to being an MC too, so I'm used to just doing crowd control and then getting off, but now I have to speak. It's the right of every woman who has ever written a book to flog it. And I have just written a book on menopause. Now, the theme of dancing on the ceiling is entirely appropriate because it is just one of the symptoms of menopause. Along with banging your head on the floor and screaming out of the window at the kids. And you're dancing on the ceiling and the rest of the family is shouting, just jump! Let me briefly answer the questions you should have asked your mum and didn't. What is menopause? Menopause is a program installed by Mother Nature into female humans to indicate that it is time to stop reproducing and start looking after the grandchildren. <laughs> Mother Nature is a little old-fashioned. For female humans today, menopause is or ought to be a signal to start getting on with our lives or to continue getting on with our lives. It is also Mother Nature's way of telling you that if you thought puberty and childbirth and high heels were painful and startling rights of growing up, you ain't seen nothing yet. Because Mother Nature can be a real bitch sometimes. Who gets menopause? Women. If you want to see whether you qualify for menopause, just drop your dax and phone a friend. You have officially reached menopause when you haven't had a period for 12 months. And because you are not an elephant, you are probably not pregnant. The average age for menopause is between 52 and 55, but it can be as early as 40. So keep an open mind and also an open social calendar. The transition to menopause is called perimenopause. During this time, your ovaries start to run out of eggs and the production of sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone and testosterone declines. It's a little bit like the Australian car industry. Pumping the eggs out on the assembly line one minute and then productivity and demand gradually go pear-shaped and stop altogether, and you don't notice that the whole work suddenly shut down and until the premises get flogged off for townhouses. When your ovaries stop producing hormones, it's called gonadal failure. And this causes much merriment and also menopause. And yes, let me tell you, perimenopause can start 10 years earlier than menopause. And during this time, your periods start getting weird, your fertility fluctuates wide, wildly, and your moods go apeshit. I hope I'm not getting too scientific. What are the symptoms? You don't get stressed once a month. You get stressed for several years. <laughs> Symptoms include hot flushes, mood swings, probably not up, and formication. Formication is not sex with bureaucrats. It is the sensation of ants crawling on your skin.
as seen in the Ants Pants commercial, only without a helpful anteater. Also familiar if you took acid in the 70s. You also get aches and pains in joints and muscles and undefined anxiety and a sense of loss, grief and loss of libido. It's just one long fucking Monday morning. If you are not yet menopausal and you don't want to be taken completely by surprise, you can practice at home by drinking an entire bottle of vodka. <laughs> and the way you feel the next morning will be cranky, sick of people, and full of remorse and regret. <laughs> then you go to work anyway. <laughs> can menopause be avoided? No. Can menopause be treated? Yes. Take drugs. Exactly. Take drugs. Take drugs. That is my message. Take the freaking drugs. Let me tell you, in the 1800s, that's not very long ago, it's only our grandmothers, grandmothers, menopausal women who displayed any sort of excitement or feistiness or assertiveness were likely to be diagnosed with climacteric insanity and sent to an asylum and treated with opium or had their ovaries removed or had radioactive rods inserted in their vaginas to stop the flooding. Amazingly, this made menopausal women sad, <laughs> which was then diagnosed as men menopausal melancholia by experts with sideburns. <laughs> to distract you, they not only closed, dosed you to the gills with opium, they then withdrew it suddenly. Then you really did go crazy and the sideburns, no, sideburns nodded to one another and said, the science is settled. 19th century women strong enough to self-medicate could stay at home and chug laudanum, which was opium and brandy. Mind you, they also thought the bustle was attractive and practical. <laughs> These facts may not be coincidental. Serious treatments, and when I say serious treatments, I'm talking drugs. Started, oh, drugs. Take drugs. Take drugs. <laughs> serious treatments started becoming available with research into hormones and HRT. But then, then, in 2002, a report by the Women's Health Initiative of women taking hormone replacement therapy urged women to reconsider their use of HRT because it increased the risk of breast cancer, stroke, thrombosis and heart attack. There was a dramatic drop in the use of HRT. 50% in Australia, 80% drop in the US. Ten years later, it was proven to be a flawed report. It was found that HRT within six years of menopause provided enormous benefits to women, including lower risk of osteoporosis, bowel cancer and heart attack, and improvement in mental capacity. Meanwhile, many women turned to bioidentical hormones, which is actually a marketing term and not a medical term. They are not natural. They have often been made in the same labs as HRT. They are synthetic. They are not tested like HRT. There is no evidence for their efficacy like HRT. And there's no way of knowing what the dose is you need. The choice is yours. Yes. Another message, always tell a doctor if you are taking herbs, crystals, or anything else. Tell your doctor. Everything you take it can be of risk to you. You have to tell your doctors what it is, even if you bought it in a health food place or it's got natural written all over it. 
And also trials have indicated that placebos work better than herbs, <laughs> except on lamb roasts. <laughs> there is no evidence that calcium and exercise improves bone density, although they can be fun and good for your teeth. There is evidence that vitamin D and HRT improves bone density. If you miss your libido, there are effective treatments, even though no one talks about them. This may be because the sideburns decided long ago that women don't have a libido. And if we do, it should be locked up in case it breaks free and takes over the world. Your menopause will not be like your mother's. It is not genetic. If you are living with another woman, your menopause, your menopauses do not synchronize. It just feels like it. Believe me, your whole family will have synchronized menopause with you, including the males and the household pets. But this is due to proximity. The best thing you can do is find a good GP who is simpatico with menopause and preferably is going through menopause herself. A GP who does not say menopause, there's a lot of it about, so get over it. A GP who knows the facts about treatment, who is confident and who has not been frightened off by the fallacies. It seems to me nowadays that many GPs who lack confidence in treating menopause decide to prescribe women who are suffering with antidepressants. It used to be take two Aspros, now it's antidepressants. Because opium is out of fashion, unfortunately. <laughs> when you're looking for a GP, my best tip is get three quotes like you would a plumber. <laughs> how do I know, how do I even know it's menopause? You will know. There isn't a breathalyzer for it, not even a blood test. Men menopause is not diagnosed by blood tests because your hormones fluctuate from day to day. It is not diagnosed by a salivary test either. The way you will know, apart from your periods ending, is by your symptoms. However, please remember, before you diagnose yourself with menopause because of your mood swings or irritability, first make sure you are not, in fact, surrounded by assholes. I think Freud said that. <laughs> Work. Menopause can often occur when, a woman is, when women are at or close to the peak in their professions. And yet at work, menopause is still a taboo. However, we have to start talking about menopause. A lot of women leave the workforce because they are suffering from menopausal symptoms and they have no way of dealing with them at work. Some are suffering menopausal symptoms and they think they are work-related symptoms. And when they leave work, it can create many problems for them. The best solution is to find a boss who is entirely sympathetic to your menopause. While you're at it, you might also like to find Blackbeard's lost pirate treasure and a cure for the common cold. Other solutions to menopause at work, including becoming the CEO before you reach menopause. <laughs> or collecting enough dirt on your bosses so, so that they will back off when you do. What are the benefits of menopause? There are many, many benefits, many of them. For those of you heading into the deep, mysterious waters of menopause, let me assure you that our powers do not recede with our estrogen. Far from it. Consider Eleanor of Equitaine, Golda Meir, Indira Gandhi, Margaret Thatcher, Lucille Ball. A quick riffle through the news will tell you that a woman has been appointed head of General Motors, a woman heads the IMF, a woman commands one of the US Navy carrier strike forces. Around 20 countries presently have elected female leaders. Let me just say, Angela Merkel. The point here is that all these women achieve their positions at menopausal age. All are powerful women.
women. And there are other great things about menopause, freedom from periods and overpriced sanitary products. Sanitary products at prices that would make a black marketeer in penicillin blush. And the fact that every, even though every woman menstruates 12 times a year for at least 30 years and has done so since mankind evolved and, in, and invented the hole in the ground, nearly every toilet is ill-equipped to deal with it. We women spend 40 years disposing thoughtfully while toilet designers go on, go on designing thoughtlessly. And I am sure most plumbers would agree with me from their luxury villas in Tahiti. And don't even get me started on prissy euphemisms like feminine hygiene. Feminine hygiene simply means that we women do not wipe our bottoms on the curtains because we chose those curtains. After menopause, no sanitary products, we will be free to go out with nothing more than a car key, a credit card, and a winning smile tucked in our Nancy Gantz. We are free to swim all year round without fear of attracting sharks. Finally, menopause is unavailable, unavoidable for all that it is challenging, uncomfortable, unsettling and distressing. It can be managed and the symptoms can be treated with drugs. And it is a beginning as well as an end, just as puberty is, where there is prejudice this is really a prejudice against ageing, and menopausal women have the right and certainly the energy to tell those prejudices exactly where to stick them. Please buy my book. Thank you. It's called it's called You're Still Hot to Me. It's out May the 1st. It's published by Pam McMillan, and you heard it here first. Feel free to tweet about this. My Twitter handle is at Jean Kitson. My publisher's is at Pan McMillan Oz. And don't forget to hashtag at You're Still Hot to Me, hashtag Pan Mac Books, and hashtag Jean Kitson. And that's the first time I've ever said that. I thank you all. Read all about it.